I'm sitting in my Buick Encore, and today I'm going to attempt to make wireless charging pad for my phone. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda. I don't know if you have a Buick Encore. The Chevy Trax might be really similar inside, but what we have here is this little cubby down here in the center console, but there is no wireless charging for it. You got to plug in a cord. And what I would love is a little spot to just drop my phone in when I get in so that I don't have to think about it. I might get a little bit of juice on my ride. It's one of those things where I don't have to worry about unplugging a cord when I get out. So many cars have built in wireless charger these days. I think it was kind of a miss that this doesn't have it, but I'm going to try to build one. So let's see if I don't screw it up. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to convert this little cubby in front of the shifter into a wireless charging pad. Now, one of the problems here is that it's not flat. I mean, this bet down here is kind of flat, but it still slopes a little forward. It has this little ledge right there. It's kind of two planed, kind of goes down, then gets a little shallower and then gets really shallow. So basically what I can't do is put a wireless charging pad that would only be here, then the phone would stick way up. What I really wanna do is try to get a wireless charging pad to kind of fit right about here so that I can still close this if I need to. Most of the time this just rides open, but I wouldn't mind being able to put my wallet or valuables or something like that, and then just put them out of sight, out of mind, you know, for security standpoint. But that means that the wireless charging pad can only come up to about here. Now, what I'm gonna use here is this Zeal Sound wireless charging pad for cars, and I like it because it's big enough to hold my iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is really big and has a case on it, so this is like a really big, hopefully you can tell that that's a really big wireless charging pad. Now, it's a little too big to fit in this cubby, but I also like the fact that it has these ridges all along the sides here so that the phone is not gonna slide out. I also love the fact that the cord goes into the side here so that I don't have a cord down here on the bottom pressing into that wall taking up space. I can run this cord now underneath this wireless charging pad to a USB plug that I'll plug into the 12 volt right there. All right now one thing I want to show you here is if I go ahead and put this in there's a couple of problems right off the bat. You can see it's too long. <laughs> That's what she said. So what I have to do here is I have to trim it a little bit and what I want it to do is sit in here deep enough that I can close this door. So one of the things I want to do here is I'm just going to ballpark it and mark it with the Sharpie that I think it probably needs to be cut right here. Now you might be saying, well, Pete, a wireless charging pad has those little circular charging coils in it and you can't cut those. Now, what I think is that the charging pad here is mostly superfluous, that the coil is right here and I feel like I can see it and feel it. Looks like it's kind of creating an indentation there. And then on this part here, I can feel that there's something, I can feel that there's electronics or something in there, so I can't do anything about that. But I think, for the most part, this top piece, the shallower piece, if I cut it right here, I don't think there's anything there. In fact, you can see how floppy it is. Now, that's the other problem that I'm going to solve in a minute here. If I can get this to fit in there, that's the first thing. But then how do I keep it from sagging and not holding my phone? So let's attempt to address that now. So now, first, I'm going to attempt a little surgery and see if I can cut across there. I'm just going to use a big pair of scissors here and see if, I, if that's going to be enough horsepower to do it. I don't know if I'll have to bust out a power tool or some really big cutters, but I'm going to try this first. Okay, so far it seems to be cutting through. I mean, it's thick and you got to use a little elbow grease, but it seems to be going. All right, so the good news is... There is no electronics there, as you can see, it's just rubber, but I did run into a problem, and that was my first cut was pretty well angled, so I actually trimmed this back down to get it a little more flush. You can see how uneven that was. I should have marked it a little better and followed a line. So now I'm a little worried that the pad here is actually too short, but what I did here is I trimmed it up, and I also beveled these edges a little bit because I know this sits up a little bit and I thought, well, maybe that'll give it a little clearance so that the door might be able to close. We'll see. You know, now that it's really short, I don't know that that's going to be a problem, but it might be a problem to get the phone to it because it might sit really deep. Now, the other thing I mentioned here is that this is really flexible. So because that cubby is shaped like a cup, but this is going to curve and hang and sag when it's in there. And the problem is that this charging coil might not be flush to the phone and might not charge. So what I'm going to do here, and this is totally kind of a Rick job, is I'm going to take this size, scuff up that, and I'm going to use one of these clear plastic rulers that tends to be a little stiffer, so you can see, and just glue it to the back of here to give it a little structure. So I'm going to take that out, just use super glue, scuff it up with some sandpaper right there, and glue it right down the middle like a spine. All right, so that's the next thing. Okay, you can see I used the super glue gel, so I'm just gonna 
kind of press that in there. Now I'll probably flip it over just to make sure that it's sitting flat on the countertop here to see if it'll glue and just stay really flat, make sure there's no bends in it. Hopefully none of that seeps out, glues itself to the countertop, but give that a little while to dry before we go on to the next stage. Okay, so this six inch plastic ruler, which came in a pack of two, by the way, seems to be on there pretty good. You can see that dry glue and I tell you what, it seems to hold its shape now. You know, I was a little worried that maybe just a little plastic ruler wouldn't give it enough structure, but that seems to be okay. Now, the other thing I ordered here was this. It's a soft touch secure pad. It's just kind of like these thin foam pads with some adhesive on the back. And I thought I might just put some kind of in the middle. I was thinking, you know, if this ruler is in contact with some of those areas that are hard plastic in the cubby, I might hear it kind of rattle as it jostles around and bounces around. So what I wanted to do is kind of put this on the bottom here so that I have a quiet foam bottom regardless. I was gonna say a soft bottom like myself, but a foam bottom to this so that even if it moves around a little bit and hits inside the hard plastic cubby, it's not gonna rattle or click or anything like that. So let's get these on there. So these strips peel off just like this. And I'll tell you what, they're perfectly sized. I don't have to do anything and they've got the adhesive on the back already so just put them on like that and i'm just gonna kind of put one down at the bottom and then fill in the remaining space in between so as i was applying them i kind of changed my plan a little bit i basically put them on the edges here and so you can see where it's doubled up here in the corners right in the middle and then also these corners and the reason i did that was because the ruler adds a little bit of thickness to this and what i didn't want is it balancing like having the ruler as a low spot and having it wobble like this in the cubby. So what I wanted are these corners to be the lowest spots on this charging pad so that if it's sitting there and these corners are touching, it won't flop. It won't teeter-totter on the middle thick part there. So that's why I went ahead and made those outside parts the thickest parts. All right, so let's get it in the car and see if it works. So back in the car and here's the moment of truth. First of all, I picked up this little and Nopi USB charger and I picked this up because it's got this little LED light to it and so I thought if I put this in here what that might do is give me a little bit of a soft lighting effect inside this cubby too just so that I can see things also help remind me that my phone is down there sometimes you tend to jump out of the car so you can see it how it has a little blue glow to it all right now I'm going to take my Frankenstein to charger here I'm going to make sure that the cable is underneath here because it's going to go like this. So the opening that I cut out there, it looks a little janky, you could probably clean that up with a little sandpaper or something, is going to be facing you. So I wanna just run that under here like this and might just plug it into the USB charger first just to make sure that that side's done. So that is plugged in there and now I can go ahead and try to slide all the cableage down underneath the charger. Okay, now I won't say that looks like a factory install, but I will show you that it is below the lip here. I trimmed that maybe more than I was expecting. There's probably almost an inch of gap right there. So that's kind of nice. If I close this, well, it's still close. Ooh, that's cool. So I can still get the privacy there. And this thing is pretty wide. It actually takes up more of the cubby than I thought. So you really can't have much else down there. I can kind of slip my pinky in that side. But now the moment of truth is to take my iPhone and drop it in here and see if it'll charge. Oh man, look at that, dude. It is charging my iPhone, wireless charging pad, now in my Buick Encore with a closable door. And so I can just grab my phone, pull it out, throw it back in here and get a little juice when I'm on the road. That is pretty awesome. Hey, if this is gonna make your life a little better, I will put the links to the charging pad, the ruler, the little foam and adhesive sticky pads, and the USB charger right there so that you can do all of this for your Buick Encore too. Links in the description below, Peter Von Panda out we can discover more and explore so much deeper